Whether you are working with a color or black and white image, you'd be ill advised not to spend some time checking the color or tonal levels. Every time I open a photograph with Adobe Photoshop, one of the first things I do is ensure that the image is not discolored or impaired as far as color or contrast is concerned. Invariably, images taken with either digital cameras or acquisitions using a flatbed scanner will lack the deep and rich range of tones that you'd expect to see in a high quality photograph. Within Adobe Photoshop, there are several methods you can use to improve your image and push it towards a professional standard. The method covered within this tutorial centers around the use of a function called Levels. Levels allow you to control the contrast, the luminosity and hue using an apparatus called a histogram. Let's start by opening up an image. Firstly, to keep things simple, we're going to experiment using a black and white photograph. Locate an image which has poor contrast, is faded, or is too dark or too light. For this tutorial, I'll use this image. Now that we have our photograph loaded into Adobe Photoshop, we will now need to access the Levels dialog box. It can be loaded by visiting the Image menu at the top of the screen and by clicking on Adjustments and choosing Levels from the sub-menu. The quick key for this function is Control L or Command L if you're using a Mac. If you've ever seen the Levels dialog box before, you may feel a little daunted. Although a histogram may look complex, the concept behind it is rather simple. A histogram can be described as a highly detailed bar chart displaying the frequency of distribution of information across a plane. In this particular case, the distribution of tonal information across the tonal range between black and white. This range is set from 0, which represents black, to 255, which represents white. Altogether, including absolute black, there are 256 individual shades between the two points. By looking at a histogram, eventually you'll be able to determine the condition of your image, whether or not it is too dark, or too light, or lacks contrast, or that the contrast levels are too great. All of these prognoses can be established from observing a histogram's shape. I can tell from looking at my histogram that this image lacks heavily in contrast. I know this because most of the tone within the histogram is huddled up within the center of the tonal range. There is no or very little information at either the darker and lighter ends. This effectively means that there is a definite lack of very dark and very pale detail within my image. Let's take a look at how to correctly optimize our image using levels so to improve the contrast. Effectively, all we need to do is stretch the tonal information from the black to the white end of the tonal range. We can do this by re-establishing the black point and the white point within our histogram. This can be performed by clicking and dragging or sliding the small triangles, the black and the white points either side of the tonal range, up to the points where the frequency of the tonal information really starts to lift, as you can see here. You can start from either end. I think in this case I'll work from left to right. I simply need to bring the black point up to where the frequency of tones within the histogram begins, or at least starts to take on a greater presence. And then I'll turn my attention to the lighter end, again bringing in the white point until it meets the end of the information within the tonal range. If you haven't already noticed, the image behind the Levels dialog box has now significantly improved. These changes will not become permanent until I click on OK. All you are seeing at this stage is a very accurate preview. While we are on the subject of accuracy, 
Of course, it is important to ensure that we do not end up inflicting more harm than is good on our photograph by applying levels incorrectly. If we were to drag our black or white point in too far, we run the risk of losing detail from our image. By doing this, you're effectively cutting off information from the tonal range. If you want to be absolutely sure that you are manipulating your histogram correctly, hold down the Alt key on your keyboard, or Option key if you're using a Mac, whilst clicking and dragging the black and white points. You can now see directly how the frequencies within the tonal range relates to your image behind the Levels dialog box. For accurate positioning, whilst holding down the ALT or the OPTION key, drag the black and the white points in, in turn, until you start to see small pixels of information appear. The aim is to tolerate these pixels up until the point that they start to form clumps. If you can see clumps of pixels forming, then you're going too far over. Back off a little there. Once you have correctly re-established the black and the white points, you can then turn your attention to tweaking your image so that it now appears as you want it to. Although the contrast looks great, your image may still be a little lighter or darker than you'd prefer. In this case, all you need to do is change the midpoint. Now the midpoint is the central slider in between your black and white points. This point controls the weighting of tonal information either towards the black or the white ends of the tonal range. Experiment with sliding the midpoint to the left to lighten and the right to darken. Once you have done this, you are now ready to commit to these changes by clicking on OK. This method, outlined in this tutorial, works well for the vast majority of images, but not in all cases. Some photographs still require tweaking by eye. In those cases, I would suggest firstly follow the methods outlined within this tutorial, and then play around with the settings, pushing out the black points and the white points, and or changing the position of the midpoints until it looks as you want it to.